Let's discuss the differences between incidence and prevalence. The incidence of a disease is defined as the number of new cases in a population over a given period of time divided by the total population at risk during that time. Thus, incidence describes new cases that occur in a time period. When calculating incidence, people who are not at risk for acquiring the disease are omitted. This includes people currently with the disease as well as people previously with the disease for conditions that cannot be acquired multiple times. Prevalence is the total cases in the population at a given time divided by the total population at risk at the same time. The population at risk includes only people who could be afflicted by the disease. For example, if you were trying to quantify the prevalence of endometriosis in a community, only women would be included in the population at risk, since men are not at risk for uterine diseases. The total number of cases include both new and old cases. Prevalence describes a single point in time. To use an image from your book to better understand this concept, imagine here we have a tub with a faucet leaking droplets of water into the tub. The incidence of disease would be represented by each droplet that falls into the tub, as these are the new cases that are being introduced into the population at risk. The prevalence would be represented by the water that is already collected into the tub, as these are the existing cases. So from this example, we can see that incidence adds to the existing prevalence. From this diagram, we can also see that both mortality and cures are represented as leaks in the tub, as they will decrease the prevalence since a person who has been cured of disease or has died from said disease is no longer a member of the at-risk population. Roughly speaking, the prevalence is approximately equal to the incidence times the disease duration. Thus, for acute diseases like the common cold, prevalence is approximately equal to incidence because almost all cases are new cases. For chronic diseases like diabetes, the prevalence will be greater than the incidence because there are a large number of existing cases. An increase in prevalence also leads to an increase in positive predictive value. Recall that positive predictive value indicates a person who tests positive for a disease is more likely to actually have the disease. So it would stand to reason that if the disease in question is more common in the population, the chances of the positive test being a true positive is more likely. Now, let's go over a few examples and try to figure out if this would indicate a change in incidence, prevalence, or both. What would an increase in survival rate do to the population? Prevalence would go up, because this means that people with the disease are living longer and more incidents are being added and less people are dying from the disease. How about increased mortality? This would decrease prevalence because we have more deaths occurring from the disease or more water leaking out of the tub. How about therapy initiation? This would also decrease prevalence because we are increasing the chances that a patient will be cured sooner. How about faster recovery time? Again, prevalence is down because we've got more people getting healthier faster. Extensive vaccine administration? Here, we're going to see a drop in incidence and prevalence. If we're decreasing the number of incidents by preemptively vaccinating a population, then we're also going to decrease the total number of existing cases in the population. And finally, decreased risk factors. Again, both incidence and prevalence will drop because we have a smaller likelihood or new presenting cases 
which will lead to a drop in overall cases. Thanks for watching, and be sure to click thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.